Ladies and gentlemen, a reminder that smoking and flash photography are not allowed in this hall. Flash photography is a hazard to the performance, performers on stage as it may blind them and cause grievous injury. Strobe lights will be used in tonight's performance. Anyone with health concerns is invited to watch the performance and overflow seating in rooms 2, E, F, and G. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we again welcome you to the 1994 Worldcon Masquerade. Please welcome your Masquerade Director, Barb Schofield. for two of us here? I guess if we really squish up. Okay, as I think they just introduced us. My name is uh, Barb Schofield, and this is my sister Connie Lyon, who's my co-masquerade director. And we'd like to just uh, tell you a few brief things about our masquerade before we start. That is, if I can get the mic at the right level. Okay, Connie's going to just explain to you briefly something about our competition and our judging. There has been some confusion in recent years about the number of awards given out, so we'd like to take an opportunity briefly to explain to you a little more about our judging system. Tonight's masquerade competition consists of two competitions. The first takes place backstage at the workmanship judge's table. Our workmanship judge will present awards for exceptional accomplishment in the creation of a costume and for exquisite attention to detail. Our second competition takes place on the stage and consists of the costume presentation with lights and sound. This is the spectacular part we all enjoy so much. There are 45 entrants to be shown tonight in the novice, journeyman, and master divisions. Yes, there are no young fans with us tonight. Okay, I'd like to introduce to our judges and just, uh, I hope you're not clapping because there's no young fans here. We should at least have a baby or something, right? Nobody often teared to bring a baby. Okay. You got a baby? Someone has a baby? Oh, that's great. It would be sort of unlucky if we didn't have at least one baby somewhere. Couldn't get the baby through customs. Now, that's really interesting. <laughs> okay. Okay, I think before we go any farther on that line, I'm going to uh, tell you I would like to introduce your judge, our judges to you, and I'm going to do something a little different. I'd like them to come out where you can actually see them instead of just looking at the back of their heads while they wave at you. So I'm going to let the judges, well, some of them are dressed beautifully. I want you to get a look at them. I'll let them walk out on stage, introduce each one of them. If you want to uh, applaud, please feel free. Okay, our first uh, judge this evening, this is the comp I'm going to do the competition judges first, is Dana McDermott. She's a science, her science fiction costumes have been seen and won awards at Western Cons, Costume Cons, and World Cons. These include Beneath Alien Waves, which won Best in Show at NOLACON 2. She is a Master of Fine Arts in Costume and Design and is a freelance theatrical costume designer. She is also a board member of the International Costumers Guild. Our second judge for this evening, I'm sure you all know and love her well, is Margie Ellers. And Margie has won numerous awards at Worldcons for such costumes as Black Queen in 1972, Queen of Air and Darkness in 1974, The Choosers in 1976, and Fire Dancer and Sun Dancer at Iguanacon. She was presented with the first Lifetime Achievement Award from the International Costumers Guild. Ask her if she's still the Black Queen and she'll say she is. Okay, our next judge for this evening is Jan Howard Finder, aka the Wombat. <laughs> I'm sure you remember Jan from last year, Con Francisco Fan Guest of Honor. And Jan has participated in, judged, and emceed masquerades for more years than he wants to admit to. Okay, our next judge for this evening is Caroline Julian. Caroline has one. Oh, okay. Let's go out here for a brief applause. 
Okay, Caroline has won awards at numerous world cons and costume cons, including Best Master for Demon Lords of Darkness in 1983, and uh, with Kathy Saunders, assisting Kathy Saunders in the Court of the Peacock King in 1989. She's uh, won a, at Costume Con, won a Best Master Award for the Four Housewives of the Apocalypse. <laughs> I was with Barb Schofield, Jackie Ward, and Elaine Mammy. She does freelance uh, couturier and theatrical costume design. Okay, our fifth and last uh, presentation judge for this evening is Tom Whitmore. Tom began by working at Westercon Masquerades from 1968 to 1980, running the show himself in 1978. He moved on to convention organizing, working as assistant to the chair for Con Francisco. He's judged masquerades at Westercon and Lost Con and invented the idea of elevator party hosts at Worldcon Atlanta. I think that really raises a round of applause. Okay, and our last judge we're going to uh, introduce for this evening, this is our workmanship judge. As we explained earlier, Susan is busy working backstage, taking close-up looks at all the costumes so that she can uh, give awards for the detailed close-up design that, you know, you might not see some of this some from the stage, but it's really worth appreciating. Okay, Susan? Come out, yeah. Susan is a master level costumer who excels at detail work and spectacular presentations. She also does fabulous humorous presentations. These are our judges for this evening. Okay, we'll just let our judges leave the stage and we'll introduce our MC in just a moment. Okay, I'm just going to introduce our MC, and I think you've all figured out by now she's a little bit shorter than me. Okay, uh, tonight's MC is Kat Connery, and uh, we we're delighted to have her with us. She has been in fandom for 15 years, showing costumes for the last 10 years. She's worked on masquerades in various capacities for the last five years, and is for the last two years has hosted the Minicon Masquerade in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Would you please welcome Kat Connery? <laughs> Give us a minute here to get things a little bit more adjusted. Thank you. And let our judges get seated so they are ready to go. And I think Ooh. And I think we're ready to start. Okay, then let's get started with our first entry this evening. It is in the novice category, Imperial Ground Assault Forces.
that was entry number one in the novice category, inspired by The Empire Strikes Back, presented tonight by John Mitchell and Scott Corwin, with help from Sheila, Sherry, Jeff, and Tony, and what a way to start off a masquerade. Entry number two tonight in the novice category, the BBC has just cast the new Doctor Who movie, and the Daleks are involved. Eric Idle will be playing the Doctor, and as the Master, Alec Rickman. However, those two actors' salaries have forced producers to cut back in other areas. Therefore, the BBC is proud to introduce its latest model of Daleks. Daleks on the cheap. <laughs> that was entry number two in the novice category, Daleks on the Cheap, presented by Denise Nielsen. And now on to entry number three in the master category. A secret spell keeps Elise and her sisters dancing every night from midnight until dawn. Peter, who loves Elise, has discovered her magic secret, but he also knows that the spell forces Elise to offer him a potion a drink that will rob him of free will and bind him to the twilight forever. The choice from the book, The Twelve Dancing Princesses, entry number three, presented by Annabelle Gilbert and Owen Edson, designed by Zelda Gilbert. Special thanks to Katie Morgenstern and Bridget Landry. <clears throat> and as we give our ninjas a chance to do what they're supposed to do, hey, come on, ninjas. They do us a big service here. Sometimes I don't think we'd make it on if it wasn't for them. Entry number four in the journeyman category. A Neo at Winnipeg. Let me tell you how in Winnipeg a fan named Charlie was attending his very first con. A Canadian Jedi brought him into sci-fi as a gopher all his time was gone. And did he ever return? No, he never returned and his fate may be unlearned. He may ride forever on the world con circuit, be the fan but never return. After 17 jobs, he was in information after fixing up the video. 
When an alien spaceship stole away with Charlie, he was kidnapped by a UFO. And did he ever return? No, he never returned, and his fate may be unlearned. He may ride forever on the world concert, could be the fan, but never return. Was entry number four in the journeyman division, <laughs> a Neo at Winnipeg. Entry number five in the novice division, and now represented by the House of Clegg II from the Klingon homeworld, this season's latest fashions. First, we have. Kelem, wearing the latest and lightweight summer battle uniform. Notice the ultra-thin alloy trim around the shoulder and spinal armor. This uniform is versatile, lightweight, unencumbering, allowing the Klin warrior complete movement for any form of combat. Next, we have Conan, Kelem's consort. She is modeling the newest in maternity battle wear. Note the cut of the uniform, the expandable side panels, traditional style. A female warrior is dressed and prepared to serve her empire at all times and phases of her life. And finally, Zinta, wearing a formal gown suitable for any state or diplomatic occasion. Note the long line of the dress, traditional fur sleeves, complete with shoulder, spinal, and chest armor. The ceremonial sash denotes her ranking in lineage and house. True to Klingon custom, her ensemble is accessorized by various weapons. Thank you. Please hold your orders. They will be taken at the end of the show. Thank you. That's entry number five in the novice division, Klingon fashion, Maya Mayrinovs, as well as Susan Pertel and Steve Ritter showing tonight. And for entry number six in the novice division, a case of night vision. Case of Night Vision, entry number six, competing in the Novice Division, performed by Cindy Colonis and Matthew Raw and Sandy Gazdecki. Oh. It's a live show, folks. Anything can happen. <laughs> now, 
we'll give them a minute to get themselves back together again while I put my heart back where it belongs. Okay, I think I was in the middle of credits. Let me fix those real quick here. <laughs> a case of night vision, entry number six, competing in the novice division, performed by Cindy Coloni, Matthew Raw, and Sandy Gazdeski. <laughs> Designed and made by Cindy Coloni. Okay, I think we're ready. <laughs> <clears throat> Yes, I think uh, at this moment we should be thanking the stage crew proliferously. Okay, let's try entry number seven tonight in the journeyman category. It is Kavi, War Chief of the Go Backs. War Chief of the Go Backs, inspired by ElfQuest, entry number seven, competing in the journeyman division, presented by Valerie Bedard. Entry number eight in the journeyman category, ribbons. That was entry number eight in the Novice Division Ribbons, presented by Ginny Ferris, choreographed by Gina Mazel. Entry number nine in the Master category, Winter. My mistress can be harsh, but also most alluring, seducing the naive, luring them into her deadly embrace. She softly lulls them into eternal sleep. She is winter. Softly falls the deadly shroud, enwraps in white the silent world, and beckons the weary traveler, sit and sleep in endless bliss. Winter entry number nine in the Master Division, presented by Kiri Ann Condor. Entry number ten in the Journeyman category, the bitch is back.
you bitch! The Bitch is Back, a recreation from the motion picture Aliens presented by Jeff Bergeron and Stephanie Richardson. Tonight's entry number 10, competing in the journeyman division. Entry number 11, in the novice category, Jurassic Omelet. The chef from the restaurant at Jurassic Park will now make a Jurassic omelet. Take one mutant dinosaur egg. Hit it several times to crack it open. Pull out the baby Barney dinosaur. Hit it on the head with the frying pan. Squeeze its little neck. Flip it on the frying pan in several times and fry it at a high temperature. The Barney omelet is now ready to serve. That's today's demonstration. Tune in next week when the chef shows 101 uses for a blender with Barney. Entry number 11, Jurassic Omelet, prepared by Derwin Mack. Entry number 12, in the Master Division, the eagle and the hawk. Entry number 12 in the Master Division, performed by Carol Salome and Eric Cannon, constructed by Carol and Laurel Cunningham Hill. Entry number 13 in the Journeyman Division, a Haitian Venetian. It is now 10 years after the great New Orleans flood of 3059. The old city was reborn based on the enduring beliefs of voodoo blended with sex magic. This is the dance of fertility and celebration. The dance of Dum Bala de Flambe.
That's entry number 13, The Haitian Venetian by Storm. Entry number 14 in the master category, Tangorian Rebirth Ritual. Every three generations, spring comes to the world of Tangor. The rebirth ritual celebrates the end of the dark winter and the rebirth of new life that accompanies spring. Nancy Mildebrandt, Michael Vandebunt, Andy Tremblay presenting the Tangerian, Tangorian, sorry, rebirth ritual. Entry 14 in the Master Division. Entry number 15 in the Journeyman category, Titanides. In John Varley's Titan, it's understood that Gaia says not why she spins, but she clearly has a strange sense of humor. Not content to recreate centaurs in rainbow colors, she made them completely compatible with humans. So Rainstick Iona Duet Blues, with a titan-eyed mother and human father, shows her ancestry with a variety of mixed parts. But her half-sister, Kazoo Mixolodian Trio Blues, had titan eyes for all three parents. Although her musical skills are limited, she's always been a great Ionian Duet Blues and Kazoo Mixolonian Trio Blues, Titanides, entry number 15 in the Journeyman Division by Zoanne Allen and Susan Eisenhower. <laughs> entry number 16 in the Novice Division, Lady Kyra. A journeyman wizard, a woman of immense magical potential, a woman who will one day be one of the most powerful mages in the world. A woman who is absolutely clumsy. Based on Barbara Mamlin's book, Stranger at the Wedding, a reproduction of the Delray cover picture by Don Mates. That's entry number 16, Lady Kyra and Angela Keehan presenting. Entry number 17 in the master's category, Ondine. Ondine, the guardian, of the guardian nymph of the fountain, sees a handsome prince and forsakes her watery home for his love.
Entry number 17, competing in the Masters Division this evening, Jacqueline Ward as on Dean. Entry... <laughs> Entry number 18 in the journeyman category, The Promise. In ages before, our own Earth was vastly different. Oceans and continents have moved and changed during millennia, which have passed since that time. During this far distant age, a civilization of incredible beauty rose and flowered. But a time came when they forgot their own origin. Darkness descended upon the people and upon the Earth. But now the age has turned again. We are living in a time of prophecy. As it was foretold in ages past, death falls from the sky. Fish die in the rivers. All the children of the earth cry out in pain. Now, children of the goddess are born again. They shall throw off fear, rise beyond pain and death. They shall be healers. That was entry number 18 this evening, The Promise, original costuming, staging, and choreography by Valerie Augusta, music by Gabrielle Roth and the Mears, visions by Isis. Entry number 19 in the novice category. Well, don't get strung out by the way I look. Don't judge a book by its cover I'm not much of a man by the light of day But by night I'm one hell of a lover Well, you got caught with a flat world How about that? Well, babies, don't you panic By the light of the night It'll all seem all right I'll get you a satanic mechanic I'm just a sweet transvestiter From transsexual Transylvania I'm just a sweet transvestiter From transsexual Transylvania Just a sweet transvestite Sweet transvestite From Transylvania <laughs> That was entry number 19, Kafrankenfurter, presented by Laurie Brown, competing in the Novice Division. And for the judges' information, if you, I hope you know this, there is no entry number 20. 
So we're going to 21. Entry number 21 in the novice division, Harvester of Eyes. The Harvester of Eyes am I, and I come to you tonight to tell you of my fiendish plan of how I'll steal your sight. I'll catch you when you're all alone and grimly pluck your eyes and eat them while enjoying the music of your cries. It's futile to avoid me, for in this I am cursed. And if you try to hide from me, I'll surely see you first. Harvester of Eyes, tonight's 21st entry, presented by Mark Jones, with audio processing by Mike Labou. Entry number 22 in the Master category. Sengunai, Aiternai, Vitai. Sangunese Aiternai Vitai, an original costume designed and made by Pierre and Sandy Pettinger, with special thanks to Michalina Pettinger, blood donor designed and made by Karen Heim, presented by Sandy and Pierre Pettinger, Karen Heim, and the Vampire Deacon, modeled by Bruce McDermott. <laughs> Entry number 23 tonight in the novice category, a Pernese lady. Samia and her fire lizard Kith are off to a gather, dressed in her finest. They are ready for a good time. Entry number 23 in the Novice Division, Pernese Lady by Shadow Dreamer Wolf. Entry number 24 tonight in the Journeyman Division, a Glasgow Gopher. <laughs> They brought Charlie back to Glasgow and the Loch Ness Monster got a ribbon on his behalf. Intersection security was his assignment. He was now on convention staff. And did he ever return? No, he never returned. And his fate may be unlearned. He may ride forever on the world concert. be the fan who never returned. 
Now the alien in training that the gave old Charlie made it easy to pull it off. When they took him away on the con's last day, he was becoming a world-class smart. And did he ever return? No, he'll never return. And his fate may be unlearned. He may ride forever on the world con circuit, be the fan, and never return. That's number 24 in tonight's masquerade, competing in the journeyman division. That's Glasgow Gopher. Ah, <sighs> yeah. It's good. The next entrant this evening, <laughs> number 24A. Walked into that one, didn't I? <laughs> Hermia. That was entry number 24, that letter. <laughs> Presented this evening by Jamie Gibson. It is a non-competing entry. Thanks, Jamie. Now, at this point in our program, what we are going to do is take a oh, slight, small break because the Canadian fifth World Con 52 Masquerade uh, was going to take, like I said, 50 20 minute break, my notes are funny, anyway. But we do invite you all to stay for just a, for the second half of the show, and we'd also like you to stay too, because we've got a special showing by popular demand of the Worldcon retrospect that ran during opening ceremonies. For those of you who didn't see it, I want you all to see it, okay? It's two months of my life in that thing. <laughs> I'm kidding. There is two months of my life in it. But anyway, so we're going to do that in just a minute and then return with the second half of our masquerade in about 20 minutes. Mm, that wasn't too long now, was it? No. We welcome you back to the second half of the Canadian masquerade. And... We would like to continue with entry number 25. In the journeyman division, Eos, goddess of the dawn. Eos, Goddess of the Dawn, entry number 25, performed by Janet Paderewski. Entry number 26 in the Novice Division, Series WT3.
Entry number 26 in the Novice Division Series WT3, presented by Walter Thompson III. God, I love the meal form. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> Entry number 27 in the novice category, my midwinter night's dream. Number 27 in tonight's competition, My Midwinter Night's Dream by Carrie Lynn Doring. Number 28 in the Master Division, Siren Song. Entry number 28, Siren Song by Joy Day and Jay Vosberg, competing tonight in the Masters Division. And entry number 29 in the Novice Division. Her Majesty the Queen and the Pirates of Finzance, long ago and far away, the Pirates of the Chesapeake hated a call from their Queen of, Fenz of Finzance to go forth and capture a Worldcon and bring it to Baltimore. There it can be enjoyed by all loyal subjects. Armed with a letter of mark, the pirates of Finzance go forth to obey their queen. We may be pirates, but we love our queen. They come in force with stealthy stride. A obvious force is now to fight.
Entry number 29 in the Novice Division, Her Royal Majesty the Queen and the Pirates of Finzance, presented by the Baltimore in 98 Bid Committee, swords provided by Renaissance Arms and Armor. <laughs> Entry number 30 tonight is a non-competitor The city of Winnipeg is pleased to welcome a delegation from the Klingon Imperial Diplomatic Corps. Headed by the Klingon Ambassador to Terra, the Lady Kazin Sutai Kasara. The Ambassador... The ambassador is wearing the latest in Klingon fashions. A diplomatic dress tunic with genuine triple hide sleeves. She is accompanied by a number of bodyguards as befits her status, namely the KBA or Klingon Bitches with Attitude and the Twin Towers of Death. It is our honor to announce that the Winnipeg Section Branch Office of the Klingon Imperial Consulate is presently being set up to handle diplomatic liaisons with the relations with Western Canadian fandom. Ladies and gentlemen and members of the Federation, please make welcome the Klingon Imperial Diplomatic Corps. Entry number 30 tonight, the Klingon Diplomatic Delegation. Entry number 31 in the Novice Division, Captain Harlock. Captain Harlock, space pirate. Yes, it's Captain Harlock, writer of wrongs, defender of the poor and helpless. A true hero who's won every battle against overwhelming odds. But that was 20 years ago, before the one battle he found he couldn't win alone. Hair loss. But today, thanks to contemporary technology, Captain Harlock has once more emerged victorious. With the Shatner 2000 hairpiece, he has even conquered Middle Age, the Shatner 2000, the choice of space pirates everywhere. That was entry number 31 in the Novice Division, Captain Harlock, presented by David Doring. Entry number 32 in the master category. Remember those afternoons when you were a kid? You would run home from school, plop down in front of the TV, and watch all those low-budget Japanese television shows on the local UHF station before doing your homework? Before eating dinner? Before your father got home? Shows like The Eighth Man, Speed Racer, Johnny Sacco and his flying robot, and Ultraman. Steve Swope and Katherine Peters present Afternoon Matinee.
That's entry number 32 afternoon matinee. The costumes were originally designed for the Japanese television show Ultraman by Tol Narita and were constructed and worn by Steve Swope and Catherine Peters. Special thanks to Dana Eilers for her assistance with choreography. Uh, excuse me one moment, ladies and, gen ladies and gentlemen. I'll be right back. Um, I, was, I was instructed that I have to wear these special protective eyewear during this next presentation. <laughs> Entry number 33 in the novice division. I miss. <laughs> that was Radioactive Hamsters from a Planet Near Mars, entry number 33, and the, these costumes were inspired by listening to Weird Al Yankovic tapes while driving home to Toronto from Costume Con 11 in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Ooh, in a small car with even less oxygen, I believe it. Entry number 34 in the Novice Division, The Firebird. That was tonight's 34th entry, The Firebird, presented by Nancy Louise Freeman. Entry number 35 tonight in the journeyman category, Working with a Rat. Twelve long months when no one heard from Charlie And we all thought he might be dead 
He was dropped at L.A. Con as the hotel liaison. He was becoming a department head. And did he ever return? No, he'll never return. And his fate may be unlearned. He may ride forever on the World Con circuit. Be the fan, he'll never return. Charlie worked so hard that every fan in the skiffy wanted Charlie to move out there. But the time grew shorter and the ship's transporter beamed for Charlie right out of there. And did he ever return? No, he never returned. And his fate may be unlearned. He may ride forever on the world concert, could be the fan, he never return. That's entry number 35 in the Journeyman Division, Working with a Rat. Entry number 36 in the Novice Division, Festival of Change. was entry number 36, Festival of Change, performed by Ellen Capes, Catherine Jepson, Kevin Jepson, designed by Eileen Capes and Catherine Jepson, based on Michael Whalen's posters, The Snow Queen and The Summer Queen. Entry number 37 in the Novice Division, The Borg. Do not worry about it. You will not be assimilated. Be assimilated. 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 No one here meets specifications. 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 One of three. Turn off the echo. 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 Teenagers, we are Borg, we have our standards. That's entry number 27, The Borg, by Florence Achenbach, Steve Fanisher, and Missouri Smith, competing tonight in the Novice Division. Entry number 38 in the Master Class. The 19th Century League of Futurists is proud to present 
the latest in its series of adaptations of the works of Jules Verne. You recall our first adventure, Michael Strogoff, courier of the Tsar, who braved the terror of the Tartars to deliver the Tsar's message to the Grand Duke at Irkutsk. Next, we featured Rovar the Conqueror, master of the world, creator of the first heavier-than-air flying machine, the Albatross. And now, a preview of our new production, the mightiest sea adventure ever written, 20,000 leagues under the sea. soon to a theater in your area. Our preview feature, Drew Sanders as Michael Strogoff, Lynn Ween as Robar the Conqueror, Gavin Claypool as Captain Nemo, Kathy Sanders, Lorraine Tatahashi, and Robbie Cantor as the Squid, and Twilight as the Nautilus. the 19th Century League of Futurists, and they'd like to extend a special appreciation to John and Judith Chapman and Lex Nakashima. Audio produced by Sweet and Low Productions. <laughs> Entry number 39 in the master category. After years of screaming children, negligent parents, and overzealous folk art dealers, the carousel animals of the world have had enough. The bravest and the strongest have come to life to defend the joy and the dignity of the roundabout. Vandals beware, the warriors of the carousel are here to defend. Entry number 39, Carousel Armor, presented by Gordon Smooter and Jennifer Menken, competing in the master class. The Carousel Armor customers would like to extend a special thanks to Dave Weiberg, Mike Berglund, and Tom Bondobai Monahan. Entry number 40 in the journeyman category, Xanadu. Yes. 
Entry number 40, Xanadu, performed by Nora and Bruce Mai. And of course, characters were designed by Vicki Wyman. And the source was Xanadu, Thief of Hearts comic books. Entry number 41 in the master category. Wait for it. <laughs> Forbidden fruit. And slowly and surely, they drew their plans against us. waiting for. Yeah. That was Kevin Dooley as Harry, Tim Coleman as Larry, and Dana Ellens as the Scarecrow in Forbidden Fruit. Entry number 42 tonight in the journeyman category, Committed. By without a word from Charlie San Antonio's time was drawing near When above the city they spelled out committee And we all knew that Charlie was here And did he ever return? No, he never returned And his fate may be unlearned He may ride forever on the world concert Could be the fan, he'll never return Charlie ran the art show, Charlie ran the hucksters, and he managed the con suite too. And the ship that took him when the con was over was a UFO that we all knew. And did he ever return? No, he never returned, and his fate may be unlearned. He may ride forever on the world con circuit, be the fan, who never returned. Then in 98, we brought the con to Boston. All the fandom did stop and stare at the former Neo from the friendly UFO who was now the convention chair. 
So remember the story of a fan named Charlie who became one of fandom's great. And support the committee of the great fan city. Vote for Boston at 98. Or else he'll never return. No, he'll never return. And his fate will be unlearned. He will ride forever on the World Con circuit. Get poor Charlie off his UFO. Get poor Charlie off his UFO. Ladies and gentlemen, the committee for Boston in 1998. Efforts coordinated by Jill Eastlake and Pat Vandenberg, Charlie the, on the UFO, lyrics by Anton Chernoff and Susan DeGuardiola, based on the song popularized by the Kingston Trio, performed by Boston area folk group Two for the Show. Vocals coordinated by Jim Belfiore and Ed Council, recorded by Stephen Friedman and of Melville Park Studios. The UFO designed and constructed by Rick Stoddard. Additional effects by Skip Morris and Donald Eastlake. Alternate UFO designed and constructed by Joanna. Come on guys, they brought you four entries tonight. It's gonna take me a minute here. Okay, here we go. We'll get through this, we'll be patient, here we go. Alternate UFO designed and constructed by Joanna Kolkis with a little help from her friends. All costumes designed and constructed by Pat Vandenberg, Alan Kent, Jill Eastlake, Zane LeBonville, Peggy Chernoff, Rich Stoddard, Joanna Kulkis, Skip Morris, John Willis, Donald Eastlake, Anton Chernoff, Ross Pavlek, Ed Council, Jim Belfiore, Maria Galvelis, and Anne Love. Presentation directed by Ed Council and Bridget McManus, third assistant director George Mitchell. <laughs> Almost. <laughs> Presentation materials came from the electrical chemical, I'm sorry, the electrical, carpentry, millinery, dressmaking, crafts, quilting, carving, ma machinist, and chemical trades. And also, recycled materials were used. <laughs> That's entry number 42 tonight in the novice class. Okay, entry number 43 in the novice class. Victoria, vampire queen of England. In Anno Dracula, Kim Newman speculates what might have occurred if Queen Victoria married Count Dracula. Therefore, we present Her Majesty, Queen Victoria. Entry number 43, Victoria Vampire Queen of England in the Novice Division presented by Eugenia Horn, designed by the Royal Society for the Advancement of Space Operetta. <laughs> Entry number 44 in the Novice Division, the only good Romulan.
That was entry number 44 in the Novice Division, The Only Good Romulan, by Grigor Ajimga. Entry number 45 in the Master Category, Our Lady of Shadow and Dreams. Once upon a time, she said, and the world began anew. Our Lady of Shadows and Dreams, an original costume designed and made by Deborah K. Jones, technical construction by Terry Jones, additional assistance by Rhiannon Jones and Brian Jones. The opening quote is from Jane Yolen. They are competing in the Masters Division tonight, entry number 45. And I think that was a lovely pay place for us to end all of our competitor, all of our comp. Thank you, competition for this evening. But before everyone decides to get up and go stretch their legs, we have one thing to do. We have a special presentation by the International Costumers Guild. Pierre and Sandy Pettinger. Hello everyone. As Kat mentioned, my name is Pierre Pettinger. I'm the current president of the International Costumers Guild. Excuse me if I lisp, my fangs are getting in my way. In February, at CosmCon 12 in Santa Clara, California, Tony Lay put forth a resolution before the membership of the International Costumers Guild, and I would like to read that resolution to you. Whereas the art of convention costuming has given many hours of entertainment and pleasure to the attendees of science fiction conventions, and whereas the execution of this art has enriched the lives and artistic impression of its practitioners. And whereas the origins of convention costuming can be traced to Nikon 1, the first world science fiction convention in New York in 1939. And whereas Forrest J. Ackerman has continued to support convention costuming by judging and appreciations, be it resolved that the International Costumers Guild recognize Forrest J. Ackerman as the father of convention costuming and be it further resolved that we extend to Forrest J. Ackerman the highest esteem and admiration of the International Costumers Guild. Could you get Forrest up here, please, if he's in the audience? The plaque, the plaque reads, 
The International Customs Guild extends to Forrest J. Ackerman our highest esteem and admiration and recognizes him as the father of convention costuming presented on September 4, 1994 at Canadian, the 52nd World Science Fiction Convention, Winnipeg, Manitoba, Canada. Prior to this, the only plaque I've had is on my teeth. But, uh, <laughs> well, little did I dream in 1939 it would lead to this. You know, I was a shy, introverted, tongue-tied kid trembling with every clickety-clack of the railroad track across the United States, almost ready to, to give up and go home for fear somebody might recognize me in the audience and say, oh, Mr. Ackerman, won't you stand? And I thought, oh, my God, I'd have a heart attack, you know, if somebody asked me to to stand, but I, uh, fans have often wondered how I got the nerve to uh, wear that futuristic costume on the sidewalks of New York where little children were crying, it's Flash Gordon, it's, it's Buck Rogers. But I think it was very much like Clark Kent uh, going into the telephone booth and coming out as Superman, that once I was in that costume, it seemed like all that uh, shyness disappeared. But, uh, well, thanks a million, folks. <laughs> Now as our judges dismiss to their deliberations, there will be a break. You tell me. I don't know how long it's going to take the judges to break, as long as it takes them to decide, right? Right. We're back, and we'd like to welcome the judges back into the room. And our judges really do deserve a round of applause. It was an extremely difficult job, and we appreciate everything they did. Okay, at this time, we're going to start, as we explained earlier, with our first competition awards. This is the workmanship competition. I'm going to introduce our workmanship judge again, Susan Toker, who'll be making the announcements. Well, as usual, not everybody comes up for workmanship awards, so I didn't see everybody. Um, we wish it, some people weren't be quite so cowardly.
Okay, now we're going to go on with the presentation awards. This is the second masquerade. And we're going to welcome back our MC, Kat Connolly. Connery? I should have been. Of course, I screwed your name up. That's okay. I'll forgive you this time. Oof. Wow. Frankly, I got to tell you. Mm -hmm. um, I got to tell you, I don't envy any of the judges for doing this. I don't envy them any decisions. Pardon me a second, I need to get higher. What would we do without them? Look short on video. Anyway, I don't envy any of the judges. Um, as I stood here and as you watched this, shaking my head in disbelief, my mouth hanging open, going, I'm sorry, I don't want to pick. I don't want to do it. I don't envy any of you, and I think you've done a marvelous job. Thanks. We'll start with the novices. Honorable mention for the chronologically gifted. Entry number 31, Captain Harlock. David Dory. Captain Harlock. Space pirate. Thousand hairpiece. He has even conquered middle age. The Shatner 2000. The choice of space pirates everywhere. And for an honorable mention for presentation, entry number 26, series WT3. <laughs> Walter Thompson III. that are running through my head <laughs> that I can't say. <laughs> Mommy, I want one. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> For the best death, entry number 44, the only good Romulan. For the best cyber shtick award, entry number 37, The Borg, Florence Achenbach, Steve Fanzer, and Missouri Smith. Turn off the echo. The echo. The echo. The echo. The echo. The echo. For presentation for uh, Most Beautiful Novice, entry number 27, My Midwinter Night's Dream. <laughs> Carrie Lynn Doring. The award for Too Cute to Live goes to entry number 33, Radioactive Hamter, Hamsters from a Planet Near Mars. Ed Carpenter, Louise Hyper, Kathy Lesson, and Cindy Huckle. The award for best recreation, entry number one, Imperial Ground Assault Forces. Yes.
Chefs Navas goes to entry number 36, Festival of Change. Eileen Capes, Kathleen Jepson, and Kevin Jepson. These ladies and gentlemen are the 1994 Novice Award winners. Okay, and now we are ready for the Journeyman Presentation Awards. Honorable mention goes to entry number 25, Eos Goddess of the Dawn, Janet Pandorowski. Honorable mention also goes to number 15, Rainstick Iona Duet Blues and Kazo Mixolonian Trio Blues, Titan. <laughs> Zoanne Allen and Susan Eisenhower. The next award this evening is an award in four acts. Entry number 24, the Glasgow Gopher. Let me tell you how in Winnipeg a band named Charlie was attending his very first con. A Canadian Jedi brought him into sci-fi As a gopher all his time was gone And did he ever return? No, he never returned And his fate may be unlearned He may ride forever on the world con circuit Be the fan, but never return Also, the working rat, let me get the other ones out here, folks. Let's see, we've got the committed and a Neo at Winnipeg. We've got all four of them. Yes, 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 yes. When an alien spaceship stole away with Charlie, he was kidnapped by a UFO. And did he ever return? No, he never returned. And his fate may be unlearned. He may ride forever on the world concert, could be the fan, but never return. Let me tell you how in Winnipeg a band named Charlie was attending his very first con. A Canadian Jedi brought him into sci-fi as a gopher all his time was gone. And did he ever return? No, he never returned. And his fate may be unlearned. He may ride forever on the world con circuit, be the fan, but never return. And tonight, the award for best journeyman goes to entry number 40, Xanadu, Nora Mai and Bruce Mai. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the 1994 Journeyman Presentation winners. And we are ready for the Master Awards tonight. Honorable mention goes to entry number 12, the Eagle and the Hawk, Carol Sommelier and Eric Cannon.
the next award, the Nostalgia Award with Tentacle Clusters, goes to, <laughs> goes to entry number 38, the 19th Century League of Futurists. <laughs> Kathy Sanders, Drew Sanders, Gavin Claypool, Robbie Cantor, Lorraine Takahashi, Lynn Wine, and Twilight. The 19th Century League of Futurists is proud to present the latest in its series of adaptations of the works of Jules Verne, Courier of the Tsar, who braved the terror of the Tartars to deliver the Tsar's message to the Grand Duke at Irkutsk. Next, we featured Rogar the Conqueror, master of the world, creator of the first heavier-than-air flying machine, the Albatross. And now, a preview of our new production, the mightiest sea of... Mmm, <laughs> dinner, no. Our next award goes is the Bram Stoker Memorial Award to entry number 22, Sangui, Saitunai, Vitai, Pierre Pettinger, Sandy Pettinger, Karen Heim, Bruce McDermott. Next award is most evocative, and it goes to entry number 17, on Dean, Jacqueline M. Ward. <laughs> the next award is Beck's best execution of concept. It goes to entry number 39, Carousel Armor, Gordon Smooter, and Jennifer Menke. The next award is Best Master. It goes to entry number 32, Afternoon Matinee, <laughs> Steve Swope and Katherine Peters. Alterman. Ladies and gentlemen, the master's category for 1994. Okay. We also have a judge's choice award this evening. It goes to entry number 10. The bitch is back. Ready, folks? I got one left. I got the biggie. You ready? 
Best in show at the Canadian Worldcon Masquerade 1994 goes to entry number 45, Our Lady of Shadows and Dreams, Deborah K. Jones. <laughs> That's the awards. I guess I just want to say a real quick thank to a couple thanks to a couple people who got me out here and ready to go and rock and roll today. That was Chrism and Derek. Thanks a lot, and of course to our tech crew, who of course without them we'd just be costumes in the hall. Thanks to them, and thank you for joining us tonight. Good night. Oh.